What's up everybody? Today I'm gonna go through and I'm going to talk about five of my absolute favorite releases from this year so far. 2015 has been absolutely incredible for music so far. We're halfway through the year and already I can say that in terms of releases we've got 2014 beat. Though 2014 was an absolutely awesome year for music, uh, I genuinely believe that the records that have come out this year so far that I've listened to and given my attention to and truly fell in love with are just a lot more dynamic and will overall stand the test of time a bit better. Also, I should point out that these five that I'm going to show you are not in any numerical order besides the order that I got them in. Though my, my top five favorite releases of this year would look pretty similar to this, uh, besides a couple things being moved around and maybe something else being added instead of one of the records that I have here, uh, it would look pretty similar. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to talk about each one of these records and just explain why I love them and, you know, I'll do all the shit that I normally do in these videos. So let's get started. First record that I'm going to show you, this is Marduk with French Wine. Genuinely, every one of you guys should know who Marduk is. Swedish black metal legends who have been around making albums since the early 90s. This is their 13th album and honestly, it's their best in a long, long time. Marduk has never been bad. They've never made a bad album, in my opinion. But genuinely, I feel like this is their best since Plague Angel, which I believe came out in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. This is also the fifth album with Mortis uh, handling the vocals, which I believe his first album on vocals was Plague Angel, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Plague Angel. Plague Angel is one of my favorite Marduk albums. That, Panzer Division Marduk is another good one, and uh, Dark Endless and this is right up there with those. Honestly, I don't know if this is better than Plague Angel, but this is very, very close. I genuinely believe that Mortis uh, has done something truly, truly special, uh, not just on this release, but with Marduk in general. I believe that, you know, the... And if you don't know who Mortis is, he's um, he's obviously the, he was the former vocalist of the also Swedish band, uh, Swedish black metal band Funeral Mist. Uh, Mortis has a very, very recognizable vocal, too. Uh, it's it's strained, it's raspy, it's mean, it's ugly, it's disgusting, and it's perfect. Everything good that Mortis added to Funeral Mist, he has taken that and taken the evil touches and brought them to Marduk. And mixed with Marduk's very war-themed lyrics, it works very, very well. And obviously this album is no exception. Mortis has crazy fucking vocals. Uh, the guitars are extremely black metal sounding, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, Morgan, the guitarist of this band, is just a fucking beast, and it, absolutely amazing guitar performance on this thing. Honestly, if you've heard it, you know what I'm talking about. So I'll show you, here's the uh, front cover here, again, very war-themed, and as I pointed out with the CD, this is the only album I own with uh, the track listing on the front of the uh, album cover for some reason. And as similar to the Digipack, this is the back, uh, Death to Peace, War at Last, very, very cool with the Marduk logo in the middle. That's the gatefold there with all four members of the band uh, behind barbed wire, which looks very, very cool. Here's the vinyl itself. It's a gray vinyl. This is limited to 200 copies, uh, which is very, very cool. It looks almost like it's wrinkled or something. Very, very cool looking. Besides the record itself, you get this uh, little booklet here, which is really, really cool. Uh, logo on the back, stuff on the front. Obviously, you get pictures and lyrics and stuff like that. Also, the scariest fucking picture of all, check out the ducks in front of the fucking tank. How cool is that? But yeah, very good stuff. That's uh, that's Marduk with French Ryan. Check that, check that shit out. If I had to recommend any songs in this thing, I would say The Blonde Beast, Africa, and Thousandfold Death, which Thousandfold Death is a goddamn chaotic song, and it's fucking awesome. All right, next record I want to go through and talk about. This is probably my favorite album of the year so far. This is Arch Goat with the Apocalyptic Triumphator. Good. Lord, this album is fucking crazy. It's honestly, it's a blast. It's so much fun to listen to. It's scary, it's evil, it's blasphemous, it's fucking crushing and sexy, and it's so fucking good. Uh, if you guys don't know who Archgoat is, they're a bestial black metal slash, I guess, war metal band, uh, death black metal, whatever the fuck you want to call it. They, uh, they're from Finland, they formed in like 89 or something, and this is only their third album, uh, strangely enough. Their third album after 2006's Horror of Bethlehem and 2009's The Light Devouring Darkness, which are both both very, very good albums. But honestly, the Apocalyptic Triumphator has them beat, hands down. Absolutely gorgeous Chris Moyan artwork here. Um, obviously, you can tell if you know who Chris Moyan is, then uh, you, you recognize this uh, art style. That's the back here. 
uh, absolutely fucking crazy. Um, y normally, I guess, with like a, a sort of bestial black metal or war metal album, you wouldn't really expect these sort of gurgled vocals that um, the vocalist of this band brings. Honestly, though, it, it works so well. Uh, Angel Slayer, his vocals are just nonsense, low, deep, guttural, sort of gurgly, nasty sounding vocals. Uh, singing about all sorts of really evil shit, and it's fucking perfect. It works so well. So again, that's the front. There's the back with the track listing, um, which the tracks obviously all have super evil names. It's an Arch Goat album. Here's the vinyl itself. That's side A, side B. Very cool. And besides all that, you get a booklet, which looks very cool. There's the artwork on the front without the logo or the uh, album title. You get some lyrics in here. Picture of the uh, band members. This awesome looking picture of a church burning. Um, I've been told that that's a real church in Finland, uh, which is very cool, I don't know the name of it though. More lyrics, all that good stuff, very, very cool. And besides all of that, and I have this framed, you get a poster. I have it framed because it's fucking sexy. If I had to say to check out any songs in this thing, I would definitely say Nuns, Cunts, and Darkness, Grand Luciferian, Theophany, uh, Phallic Desecrator of Sacred Gates, the title track, The Apocalyptic Triumphant, are amazing shit. Alright, alright, to break up all the black metal that you're seeing in this video, next record I want to show is Gruesome with Savage Land. Obviously, I've talked about this album twice before, both in one video, because I had the CD and the cassette. Uh, Gruesome is actually a relatively new band. They formed sometime early last year, if I'm not mistaken. They're based out of both California and Florida, and they have members from extremely hard-hitting bands within the death metal realm. Bands like Exhumed, Possessed, Malevolent Creation, and so on and so forth. You guys should probably know what Gruesome is by now. Uh, I believe they started as just a, like a death cover band or a tr just a tribute band in general, and that is totally what Savage Land is. Savage Land is early era, early era being Scream Bloody Gore and Leprosy. It's early era death worship and what amazing death worship it is. It's so good. It, it doesn't copy and paste, uh, you know, death riffs or anything like that. It is its own entity entirely, but it does it in such a sort of um, reminiscent manner that it's almost scary how, how much it will remind you of earlier death. Only any song on here has riffs and just just a tone in general that you could pull from a, an early death song or pretty much you know any old school death metal band from the 80s. This has a very 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 1980s feel to it. Uh, it's gritty. It's nasty. It's fucking amazing. Also, Matt Harvey from Exhumed does his vocals seriously sound like Chuck's vocals. It's amazing. Also, I should point out that I'm filming this on Chuck's birthday. It would say it would be his 48th, 48th birthday today. Not intentional. Uh, it won't be uploaded today, obviously, but um, not intentional, but I think it's pretty fucking cool. That's the artwork. Uh, another cool thing, another sort of layer of death worship. Uh, Ed Repka did the artwork for this, and obviously Ed Repka did the uh, artwork for the first three death albums, Scream Bloody Gore, Leprosy, and Spiritual Healing, of course. This artwork's in a, a bit in a different direction, but uh, either way, it definitely has that Repka feel, it definitely has that 80s feel. Uh, their logo definitely looks like a 1980s death metal band logo, very cool. That's the back cover here with the four band members, again, really awesome looking logo. Uh, you got the track listing right here, uh, very, very cool. Also, uh, another cool thing, uh, James Murphy, who played guitar on Leprosy, uh, guests on this album. He makes a guest appearance. He does a solo on the song Closed Casket, if I'm not mistaken. Once again, just adds to the death worship that this album and band are not subtly portraying. They're very obviously paying homage to one of the greatest death metal bands of all time, in the opinion of most people. And they do it in a very, very... Uh, respectful manner. They have respect for the source material. It's really, really cool. I absolutely love this shit. Pretty simple lyric insert here. It's just got the track listing and like a little picture for each one of the um, songs. Very cool stuff. And much like the Marduk vinyl that I showed, this is on gray or silver vinyl, I guess. I believe this is limited to 250 copies, if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, which is cool. I wanted the bone white vinyl, but uh, unfortunately that ran out before I would, had time to pre-order this thing. Also, if I'm not mistaken, from what I remember reading on the website, uh, the gray vinyl that I have right here, yeah, I guess it, it's like a relapse 20 fifth anniversary edition or something like that I don't know I didn't I didn't that's not why I got it I just prefer this over black I guess so that's gruesome with Savage Land very very cool stuff absolutely amazing early era death worship as I say uh, and there's no excuse for you not to listen to this stuff it's absolutely incredible if I had to say any songs on here to definitely check out the title track Savage Land is very very cool uh, which they have released a music video for uh, made up of clips from the movie uh, Cannibal Holocaust, which is an absolutely disgusting movie. Uh, besides that, Hideous is a good song, Demonized, Close Casket, uh, Gruesome. All very, very good stuff. Definitely check out Gruesome. Definitely check out Savage Land. It's worth your time. All right, on to the releases that are not uh, full-length albums. The first one I'm going to show you here is an EP that was released last month, if I'm not mistaken. This is Grimoire, with a title that I will not even begin to try to say because I do not speak French. I don't even know what this translates to. I didn't look it up and I just don't fucking, I don't know. Grimoire is a one-man side project uh, of multi-instrumentalist Fiel, who obviously is in bands most notably uh, Fortress. That being the case, it's pretty obvious that this band is a Quebec black metal band, which Quebec is becoming one of the greatest places on the planet for black metal. If you consider bands like Sorcerer de Glass, uh, Gris, Sombre For It, it's fucking amazing. That's not including Fortress because obviously they're amazing. I would say they're probably my favorite band uh, in the Quebec black metal movement, if you will. So these guys formed in like 2010, I think. They, uh, they have one full length LP, uh, but this is the only other thing they've done as far as I'm aware, and this is an EP. The full length, I believe, was released in 2010 uh, with the title A La Lumiere Descendris, if I'm not mistaken. I have no idea what that translates to. I just feel like it's a little bit easier to say than whatever the fuck this means. This is... Uh, there are no words. This is absolutely incredible. Amazing artwork. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you know, just, it, and it really adds to the atmosphere of the entire record. This is an extremely epic, atmospheric, triumphant record, um, or EP, if you will. I, uh, I mean, I guess it's still a record. Especially, it's definitely present on the first song, Tragedy de Ombres. It's so, it's so triumphant, it's so epic, and it just makes you, it, it really does put you in, in a, in, something that looks kind of like this, which I think is very, very cool. So again, here's the artwork on the front with, I like the big, uh, the big uh, band title above it all. I just think it looks very nice. That's the back there. Uh, I like, I like also like uh, when bands do this sort of weird like strip on the back. I, I have a Burzum's Philosophum has something very similar to this and I just like the way it looks. I think it's cool. Also, everything on here is in French. Um, everything, even on the, on the actual record itself where it says side one, or side A and side B, actually it's right here on the back. Right here, all in French. Printed in her sleeve here. Uh, that's uh, Fiel himself, very cool. Again, all in French, you got the lyrics, all in French. And the vinyl itself. Uh, absolutely gorgeous, deep blue vinyl. Very, very cool. This is limited to 500 copies. This is mastered at 45 RPM, and it's just breathtaking, seriously. As much as I wanted the Die Hard version of this, there was really no reason for it. I genuinely have no more space on my walls or anywhere for flags. At this point, I really don't have a flag that I want to take down to replace with another one. Um, and though it may have been worth it, I just, I really just don't have the space. So that's Grimoire with, again, totally unreadable to a typical American title. Uh, absolutely amazing definitely check this shit out this is probably my favorite EP of the year obviously it's either this or the Forbidden Transformation by AMSG but this is still very very good uh, definitely check out Grimoire if you've never heard of them obviously all the links will be in the description 
Um, though, I will be putting, besides just links to listen to these releases, I will also put you give you links to where you can purchase these releases. As these are all brand new albums, they're all pretty accessible. None of them will be difficult to find. So, in that case, I'm going to leave you links to where you can purchase these things for yourself, so you can listen to them all you want, because that's what buying music is good for. Finally, the last thing I'm going to show in this video comes in the form of a split between two crazy fucking chaotic bands. This is Black Witchery Split with Revenge. This is titled Holocaustic Death March to Humanity's Doom. Obviously, if you've been following the whole war metal thing for, you know, back into the early 90s, uh, then you'll be pretty aware that this split kind of has history behind it. In 2000, Black Witchery did a split with Conqueror entitled Hellstorm of Evil Vengeance. Obviously, back, back then, Black Witchery had not made the name for themselves that they have now, uh, so I think it's very, very cool that 15 years later, Black Witchery, having cemented a name for themselves and having, you know, become a more well-known, well-respected band in the black metal underground, uh, have come back to make a split with basically, you know, Conqueror's new form, if you will. Absolutely incredible. Chris Morin artwork again, which is very, very cool. Uh, that sort of typical revenge artwork, which actually I think this is uh, probably my favorite revenge artwork so far. Also, uh, something worth noting, this is the first Black Witchery uh, material that's been released at all with uh, their new guitarist, I believe, who goes by the name of Elal Zaster. Um, so that's very, very cool. I'm not exactly sure if he took the place of guitars or um, drums, but either way, I mean, he, you know, he's upheld what Black Witchery is known for, which is chaotic fucking war metal. Uh, Black Witchery side is three tracks. Uh, I believe altogether the three tracks are probably like 14 minutes long or something like that. Uh, and it's Black Witchery doing business as usual. It almost sounds like it was recorded live. Uh, it's, it's very gritty, it's very dark, it's very ugly. It's just Black Witchery doing what Black Witchery does which is fine with me. And on the Revenge side, you have pretty much two tracks wrapped up into one. You have a new song uh, from Revenge entitled Humanity Noosed. And then around the six minute mark of that song uh, comes the intro of something that when I heard what's happening, I was very, very excited about. That being Revenge covering a Bathory track. The Bathory track being Equimanthorn, which was on Bathory's third album, uh, Under the Sign of the Black Mark. And it just works so well. With the sort of crazy pitch-shifted uh, vocals that Revenge is obviously known for, it, or Jay Reed, I guess, specifically. And Revenge having this sort of crazy uh, war metal slash, like, almost grindcore-esque feel to them. Uh, covering a Bathory track, it's fucking nuts. Re Revenge is pretty much just doing what they know how to do, what they've been doing since the early days of Conqueror, creating this insane style of war metal. It's, it's fucking nuts. It's chaotic. If you've never heard Revenge, then you're probably better off because Revenge will fuck you up mentally. Absolutely crazy shit. So I'll show you the artwork again. Uh, that's the Black Witchery side. This is the Revenge side. It comes with a lyric insert here, which is very cool. The Revenge side is just, that's an absolutely awesome looking image here. Uh, and just overall, I prefer Revenge as a band. I prefer their side on this split. I prefer their music, ev just their artwork, everything. Besides that, you get a sticker. The vinyl itself, which is pressed on white vinyl. And if you're at all familiar with this release, means that I got the Die Hard Edition. Strangely enough, the Die Hard Edition has no um, indicated limitation to it. It's basically just, uh, there's no there's nothing saying this is limited to this many copies, so I'm pretty sure you can still get this if you want it. Uh, and the reason you want the Die Hard Edition is because, it comes, is because it comes with two huge flags. The first flag here is the Black Witchery flag, which is fucking massive with again that Chris Moyan artwork which we all know and love and again my favorite of the two the revenge flag which is absolutely gorgeous 
So yeah, that's what you get with that. That's why you want the Die Hard Edition. You, there's no reason to turn that shit down. Plus, I mean, it's totally worth the price. It's just really, really fucking awesome. So that's it, guys. That's uh, that's the Black Witchery split with Revenge. This is the only split from this year that I've picked up, uh, unfortunately. I guess just there hasn't been too many that have really appealed to me that I've noticed uh, or have seen coming out or anything like that. So whatever, that's fine with me. This is the best split that will come out this year anyway. So that's it, guys. Uh, those are five records that have come out this year that I've fallen in love with. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite of all these records are. Uh, let me know what your favorite releases of 2015 in general are. Uh, I'd be curious to hear it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I'll be back soon with more music because I always have more shit to show. So until then, guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned and take care.